This week, the chairperson of the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, retired SCK Archbishop Eliud Wabukala, issued yet another threat from the anti-graft body that they would shortly be publishing names of politicians who he suggested were tainted in order for the electorate to make informed choices next year. In short, the retired bishop was saying they would soon present us with a list of persons with questionable reputations and see what, if at all, we will do with that information come August next year. Now, I was intrigued by this notice, not so much for its novelty, because after all, the ESCC had said this before, many times in fact. What bothered me, however, was the cry by Wabukala that they published a similar list in 2017 of 106 politicians who were facing corruption allegations, but lo and behold, Kenyan, Kenyans went ahead to elect a good number of them in that election people who had integrity questions around their lives. Now, this has been the defense of the ESCC every time they are accused of allowing tainted individuals to access public office, that they do their part, but the electorate somehow looks the other way. But on a serious note, really, is that all the ESCC can do with regards to ensuring adherence to Chapter 6 of our Constitution? The act that creates the anti-graft body gives it specific functions, such as investigating and recommending appropriate action for corruption and unethical conduct, preventing the occurrence of corrupt practices, as well as recovering stolen property. I know it's easy to pass the buck to members of the public, and I will also do that in a moment. But wouldn't we listen to the ESCC more if they had done all these things that are so clearly spelt out in their mandate? Fine. The ESCC says they flagged 106 politicians in 2017 and we still elected them. Now this is 2021. Did they pursue those 106 people beyond the ballot? What became of them? I would rather the ESCC were telling us that out of the 106 they already took X number of them to court and perhaps even recovered some stolen property from them. It is surely not enough to publish names of suspected crooks ahead of an election. The ESCC ought to be potent regardless of where we are in the electoral cycle. So yes, let them publish all the names they want, but until a politician is behind bars on the strength of solid evidence, all this will continue to be seen as mere smoke and mirrors. But as I suggested, it doesn't stop there. Yes, indeed, the ESCC, the DCI, DPP, and all these bodies we call independent have a key role to play in barring or weeding out crooks from leadership at any level. But what about you and I? I mean, if Mr. ABC or Madam XYZ has been accused of corruption and they present themselves for election, should we not think twice about giving them the chance? I mean, true, they are innocent until proven guilty, but surely, what if we elect them and then they are found guilty later on? What if they are indeed corrupt and we go ahead and give them the chance? How safe are the resources we put at their disposal? Ladies and gentlemen, we are an interesting people with peculiar habits, someone once said. We love talking about corruption. We want the world to know we are not corrupt. We hate it. Everyone who is caught in corruption cases covers their face when they are being arrested or are being arraigned. But do we really hate corruption that much or we just hate being caught? Think about it. The ACC is created specifically to deal with corruption, but nearly 17 years later, they remain big on threats and promises and very small on tangible results. The DCI, DPP2 are not faring any better despite the many dramatic arrests arrests. Then there are the political parties that promise heaven during elections, their manifestos colored with high-sounding pledges on fighting corruption, but they end up nominating tainted people to run for office. And then there is you and I, the voter. We can swear by the moon and the stars that we hate corruption, but when presented with corrupt leaders, what do we do? We follow them to the end of the world and vote them in in overwhelming fashion. Like Paul in the Bible asked of the Galatians, let me ask tonight, just who has bewitched us, fellow Kenyans? That is my angle for the week.